Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's go over the basics of how to navigate, interact, and tackle the world of UO Forever. The goal of this video is to give you a basic understanding of the mechanics discussed. Not so much a detailed overview. We'll create in-depth videos for many of these topics in the future. In the meantime, check the description where I've posted links to various wiki articles. Okay, let's get started. Your cursor is how you interact with most things. If you hover over objects, you get the basic information such as the name and quantity of the item. To interact with most things, you either single or double left click. But we'll get more into that as the video goes on. As stated in the Gumps video, you can move Gumps around by single left clicking and dragging, and then closing them by right clicking. To move your character, you right click and hold, then move your mouse around to navigate. You can also move using the arrow keys, but it limits your movement to only four directions. If you hold your cursor close to your character, you'll walk, and if you move it further away, you'll run. To open doors, you simply double left click the door, and then to shut the door, you double click again. Let me show you how to interact with items by moving them around in my backpack. I'll go to my paper doll and double click my backpack to open it. To pick up an item, you single left click, hold, and drag the item. To drop the item, you release. If it's multiple items, a prompt will come up asking how many of those items you would like to move. You can relocate objects in your backpack to other containers, you can even throw them on the ground. If you drop an item onto yourself, it'll drop into your backpack. If you drop an item onto another player, it'll initiate a trade request. Just like my backpack, you can open any container by double left clicking and closing with a right click. Containers include pouches, bags, boxes, crates, chests, and much more. To equip wearable items such as armor, weapons, clothing, and jewelry, drag and drop these items on your paper doll and release. Now that we have our armor and weapon equipped, let me show you how to attack. Click the peace button on your paper doll which changes you into war mode. You know you're in war mode when the button and the cursor turns red. Double click anything to begin attacking. Melee weapons require you to be next to your target before you'll start swinging, but you can attack at a distance with archery. If you take damage, you can heal yourself using bandages, magery, or alchemist potions. Since we're on the subject of combat, let's talk about stats. If you open your status bar, you'll see three stats, strength, intelligence, and dexterity. Stats increase passively as you play your character, so don't worry too much about this. On UO Forever, we have a stat cap of 225, so typically two of your stats are 100, and the last one is 25. Melee characters usually have 100 strength and dexterity, with 25 left for intelligence, and mage characters have 100 strength and 100 intelligence and 25 left for dexterity. Strength provides health, which everyone wants. Dexterity provides increased swing speed, which all melee characters want. And Intelligence provides increased mana, which every mage character wants. UO Forever is a highly social game where you'll come across thousands of players making friends and enemies. To have a chat with someone, press the Enter key for your chat bar to open. Begin typing and hit Enter when you're ready to send your message. You'll see it pop above your head. In addition to social advantages, chatting is a way to send commands to certain NPCs, tamed animals, and most importantly, accessing your bank. When you die in Ultima Online, all your items drop onto your corpse and can be looted by other players. The only exception is special items that are called blessed items. This is what makes Yo such an exciting and rewarding game to play. One way to protect your precious items is to keep them safe inside your bank, which only you can access. Each town has at least one bank. To see your bank, single left click on the banker and select Open Bank Box. Or the quicker and most common way is to stand outside the bank and type Banker Bank. Let's talk about dying in UO. On Ultima Online, death is inevitable. Everyone dies a lot. It's just part of the game. Accepting this can make things much less stressful as a beginner. When you die, you have a few options to get resurrected. First, a kind player could cast the resurrection spell on you or use bandages. More than likely, you'll have to find your own way. If you know the land, you can travel to an Ankh or a healer to resurrect. If you're in an unfamiliar area or you know you're too far away from a healer, you can use a special item called the Ring of Forgiveness. 
This item teleports you to the Britain Healer if you're blue and the Buccaneers Den Healer if you're red. All you need to do is say the phrase, I seek forgiveness as a ghost. You can use this ring once every 12 hours. The Ring of Forgiveness can be obtained through a quest in the Young Dungeon, or you can purchase it off the Unique Wares Vendor. You can also click the Help button and use the Stuck command to teleport you to any town, but you can only use this twice every 24 hours. A good way to avoid unnecessary death is understanding the flagging system. There are three general flags your character can hold, blue, gray, and red. You can see someone's flag by the color of their name. Most players you'll interact with are blues, which means they're considered friendly. Grays are referred to as criminals, and reds are referred to as murderers. Towns are protected by special NPCs called guards. Being gray and red in town makes you subject to being attacked by the guards. NPCs and players can summon the guards by saying guards, and they will instantly kill you. Guards can be summoned for a number of reasons, but the most common way is by attacking another player or looting from a blue's corpse. You turn red by killing multiple blues or NPCs on a character. So as a beginner, avoid attacking anyone blue and be careful who you loot and you should be fine. Vendors can be found throughout towns and can be recognized by having their specialization after their name. For example, this vendor has the blacksmith after their name. If you single click on a vendor, you'll have a bunch of options to choose from. If you select buy, the vendor's inventory will pop up and you can select the item and quantity you want to purchase. You'll see the total gold amount needed to make the purchase, and you either need to have the amount of gold in your backpack or bank to make the purchase. Click the red check to proceed. Now for selling. It's very similar to buying. Vendors will pay you for items relevant to their craft that you have on you. If you have things that are sellable, a gump will pop up and you choose the items that you want to sell. So since I have a few daggers on me, I'll be able to sell them to the blacksmith and you can see the gold pop into my backpack. Bulk order info is something I won't cover in this video, but essentially they're mini quests for crafters. Check out the wiki page linked in the description for more info. The last options you see are for training skills. You can pay various vendors to increase your skills up to 50 points. Simply select the skill you want to train and that vendor will tell you how much gold it will cost to train. Take that amount of gold out of your backpack and drop it onto the vendor and you'll see your skill increase. You may want to go between a few vendors in order to get the full 50 points. Let's talk about skills. On UO Forever, you can be whoever you want. A warrior, crafter, tamer, treasure hunter, and so on. Skills start at zero and go up to 100 points. You can go beyond 100 points, but that isn't relevant for you as a beginner. You gain skills by simply using them. Having 100 points in a skill is called being a Grand Master at that skill, or GM. So since I have 100 hiding, I would say I'm GM hiding. You can also look at my paper doll and see the official title of GM hiding, which is Grand Master Shade. If you look at all of your skill options, you'll see they're separated into different categories. If you expand each category, you'll see the different skills within it. Some skills are passive, and some skills are active. If they're active, they'll have a blue dot next to them, which you can click to use. For example, I'll click hiding and you'll see it being used. If you look at the bottom of the skill gump, you'll see the number 568. That is the sum of my total skill points. If you were to take a sum of all the numbers shown here, it would equal to 568. The maximum number of skill points you can have on one character is 700. This is called the skill cap. So, you have to think closely about the build you want to create. Most people have multiple characters for different builds. If you're brand new, no need to worry about builds. The next video is a guide to the Archer Bard, which is perfect for beginners. If that doesn't interest you, or you'd like to try something different, I would recommend going to our wiki to find a template or ask for help in our Discord. If it's your first time playing, I strongly suggest you follow the Archer Bard Guide. There are many ways you can get around UO. At first you'll be running around on foot, but you should try to get a mount as soon as possible. There's tons of options for mounts, but the easiest one to get is a horse as you can purchase it from an animal trainer. Now double click your mount to begin riding, and to dismount you double click yourself. There are many options to fast travel in UO. The first and free way is moon gates, which can be found throughout the world, typically near a town. Simply stand in the moon gate and you'll see an option to travel to that town's moon gate. You'll need a boat to travel through water. Boats can be purchased from a shipwright and the deed will go into your bank. Double click the deed and place it in the water. Double click the tillerman and click embark to hop on. You can find all the boat commands on our ship wiki page linked below.
Be sure to use the world map on your travels to help you not get lost, or you can visit the town or dungeon pages on our wiki. You can also use the spells Recall and Gate Travel to fast travel around. Purchase a rune from a mage and cast the spell Mark on the rune to mark your location. When you cast the spell Recall on the rune, it'll teleport you to the location you marked. If you cast Gate Travel, you open a gate where others can travel with you. Runes are not blessed, so it's recommended you purchase a blessed rune book to keep them safe. Since we're talking about casting spells, let's talk about Majory. Majory is an extremely powerful skill to have as it provides offensive, defensive, and utility spells. If you open your starting spellbook, you'll see the spells are categorized by circles. The circles go from 1 to 8. Each circle requires a different amount of Majory skill in order to attempt to cast the spell. The first circle requires 1 point in Majory to cast, all the way up to the 8th circle which requires 80.1 skill to attempt to cast. Just because you can cast a spell doesn't mean you will successfully. Spells have a chance to not successfully cast depending on your Majory skill level and the spell circle. This is called fizzling. The higher the spell circle, the more likely it's going to fizzle. If you look at your spell book, you'll see that you don't have spells beyond the 4th circle. You'll either need to find the scrolls of these spells off monsters, make them using inscription, or purchase from players. The easiest thing to do if possible is purchase a full spellbook from another player. To cast a spell, you need the required skill level, mana, and special items called reagents. Reagents are used each time you cast a spell. If I click on Strength, you'll see I need Mandrake Root and Nightshade to cast. If I hover over Strength, it'll give a quick description of what the spell does. When you're ready to cast, double-click the spell and you'll be frozen in place while it's channeling. You'll see the unique power words of the spell pop above your head. Once complete, a targeting cursor will pop up and you can target yourself or another player to instantly cast the spell and mana will be consumed. For quick access to spells, you can drag these icons out of your spellbook and have them on your screen at all times. Resource gathering and crafting is a significant part of Ultima Online. Players rely on other players to harvest resources and craft items to support many functions of the game and balance the economy. You can gather resources using skills such as mining and lumberjacking, or find valuable resources as loot on monsters. There's a wide variety of crafting options which include blacksmiths to create armor and weapons, carpentry to create furniture, alchemy to create potions, and inscription to create scrolls. There are many others, these are just a few examples. Each crafting skill requires the proper resource and crafting tool to create an item. Let's take alchemy for an example. I'm going to craft an explosion potion. Alchemy's tool is called a mortar and pestle, which I'll double click to begin creating my potion. A gump will appear and it will show all my alchemy crafting options. I'll select explosion and choose regular explosion. If I click this box, a new gump will appear and it shows me the required skill and resources needed to craft this potion. I satisfy these requirements, so I'll click Make Now. You'll see I successfully made the potion, which you can read from the Notices box and the potion appearing in my pack. This process is similar to other crafts, but just requires different tools and resources. You can tame and control animals on UO. There are a wide variety of animals you can tame, from dogs and rats to bears, beetles, and dragons. Once an animal is tamed, people usually refer to them as pets. You use the skill Animal Taming to tame pets, animal lore to control them once they're tamed, and veterinary to heal them with bandages. Pets are controlled with chat commands such as all follow me, all stay, and all kill. If your animal lore isn't high enough, your pet may not listen to you. If you feed a pet well for a week and keep them alive, they'll bond to you. Bonded pets can be resurrected using your veterinary skill. We'll put out an extensive taming guide in the future to go over all the details of taming. In the meantime, check out the taming page on our wiki link below. One of the coolest features of Ultima Online is you're able to own and decorate your own home. Houses are great because they provide safety and storage. You can create fully customized homes, but we'll focus on pre-made ones for this video. Visit an architect and purchase a home placement tool. Scout out a house location and place it wherever it won't be obstructed by the terrain. An open field is your best bet. There are a couple of really important things you need to understand about houses. First you should place items in secured containers. Secure containers protect your items from being looted by other players. Also, any items not in a secure container or locked down will decay and disappear over time. 
Second, you need to refresh your house every four weeks by double-clicking the sign, using a teleporter, or opening the door. If you don't, your house will decay and be destroyed. That about covers the basics of UO Forever. Now you're ready to actually play! I'll see you in the next video where we build our first character, the Archer Bard.